Hi everyone, it's day 27. We have made progress and we're in the book of 1 Kings. All the while we're doing all the study so far, I kept noticing Joab. This guy, does he not even learn? <laughs> you know, some days ago I told you about how Joab and his brother don't have sense. <laughs> I said that. But you and I, don't we sometimes behave like that? I want us to look at the concept of loyalty. And then from Joab's perspective, when you say you are serving someone, not even God now, a leader, and you've decided that you want to follow them. I know please, this is not about extremism. This is the reality. Especially when you know that your destiny is connected with that leaders. You've come to a place where you know that both of you are, you know, at pair to do what God has what God wants to do in season. How you define loyalty would be very important at that point. Joab did a lot of good things. Joab, okay, for instance, when Absalom ran away after he killed um, Amnon, who raped his sister, Tamar, the Bible says that Joab noticed that David wanted to see Absalom. And then he sets up a woman who comes to act as a widow and gives... Um, What's that word again? A proverb. Thank you, Father. And gives a proverb to David. And then David could tell that this was Joab that, you know, was Joab that put the summa up to it because David knows that Joab is wise. <sighs> he actually is. But the times that he acted foolishly, he allowed the works of the flesh. He allowed bitterness. He allowed vengeance. And he did not think about the authority of David over his life. I'll come to between us and God, but let's talk about human relationships, leadership and loyalty as we walk this path of life called earth. Joab, like I said, had done many good things, but these two things he did scattered the entire record of whatever good he might have done. I mean, Joab was one of David's mighty men. He was in charge of David's army, like the chief of armed forces. The first thing that was wrong that Joab did, like we discussed days back, was to kill this guy that David held in high esteem. His, I mean, um, he killed the guy because the guy killed his brother. Remember the gazelle feet that was chasing the, pre, um, the captain of Saul's army? I think his name is Abiathar, right? And then he has survived. But David, I mean, Joab comes in a time of peace and kills this man. Then comes another interesting man who David has said he will make Captain of his army. That man's name is Amasa. Joab decides that killing the man is a good thing. Whatever the story between him and that man, whatever the reason, since you have found that your master is interested in this man, could it be jealousy that's made Joab go and kill this man? What exactly was Joab's issue? When you say you are loyal to somebody, Loyalty sometimes demands that you keep your own interest aside to fund the interest of your leader. That's the reality. You can't say you're loyal to someone when your only when your will only aligns with theirs when it favors you. You can't say you're loyal to someone when you only do what they want when it's convenient for you when he favors you i mean if we cannot practice loyalty to man we can't really do loyalty with god let's be honest with ourselves loyalty with god is extreme much more extreme than loyalty with man but regardless on either state with man or with god loyalty is loyalty and the test of true loyalty is to do against your will in honor of the will of your master david never wanted abiathar dead joab and David was aware that Abiathar killed the gazelle feeds guy. But it's a gazelle feeds guy that looks for trouble. We already talked about that. We're not going to go, go over that anymore. You can find the video, I think, two or three days back that we talked about the gazelle feed guy. Now, David knew that the gazelle feed guy is dead. Well, okay, I, I mean, why didn't Joab discuss this pain with David? I know he's a king and he's not like their friend. So they don't know getting to say anything. That's what we would be thinking. But... Many times you see Joab advising David, and David does what Joab says. 
So if you're grieved, why didn't you talk about it with your master? Why didn't you say, this happened? And I know that he already knew that David would not support his Gazelfin brother. So he decided to avenge his brother. That single act put him in enmity with David, even though David did not take action immediately. But the, the straw that broke the camel's back was when he went on to kill Amasa. And then we see in 1 Kings, well, David tells Solomon, he says, look, don't allow Joab's head go down in peace. This time around, David is not avenging these guys that have died just because. David is not doing it just because. David is doing it because, again, they are the Lord's anointed. This guy, the King David, hi to him. He has a huge respect for the anointing. Little wonder the anointing will flow so powerfully through David that years later, every time we go through the Psalms he has written, every time we go through his story, we are inspired to honor the Lord and the anointing on our lives. King David is indeed a hero. Now, David is avenging Abiathar and Amasa not just because he's doing it, because they are the anointed of the Lord. And that's what Joab failed to see. Malice, anger, vengeance, all those bitter things, they never get you anywhere. They will never help you do something right. And these are things to check, emotions to check when you decide to, to follow a leader, to serve in any capacity, whether it's business or ministry, or even your family. Always make sure you don't make decisions in that state. And if you have to discuss these things, come up and discuss it with your king or your master and say, this is what's going on. This loyalty never pays. Look at how Absalom uh, ended up. And look at Joab. I, I, I looked forward to his reign. I mean, it would have been something of pleasure for him to have reigned and ruled again with Solomon. But no, he cut his reign short because he didn't have the sense to know when not to strike. If you say you've been loyal to a leader, let's even leave God first. Are you truly being loyal? Again, the test of loyalty is to be able to keep your will in honor of the will of your leader. But please make sure your leader is godly and only goes after the cause of God, like in David. Finally, if you're loyal to God, make sure that even when what you want does not align with what he wants, you let go yours to grasp his. Loyalty is a virtue. Cultivate it. I'll see you tomorrow.